Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I talk about the NWSL, women's soccer, just soccer, only soccer. So a lot has been happening or going on in the women's soccer world. Lots of weird and interesting trades. Feel free to skip ahead to the main story if you'd like me to get right into it. Anyway, starting with the Lynn Williams trade, she was traded from the North Carolina Courage to the Kansas City Current. Racing Louisville goalkeeper Michelle Betos was traded to Gotham FC. Cool trade for Gotham. I just hope she can get playtime, especially with Ashton Harris being there as well. San Diego Wave signed Swedish international Sophia Jacobson, who asked to have her buy-in contract terminated. Very cool. For the Orlando Pride, draftee Mia Fischel decided she wanted to play for the Mexican club Tigris, so she's heading there. And according to some women's soccer critics, I should be very upset about it, <laughs> but I forgot to schedule in an adult ten temper tantrum, so yeah, there's that. <laughs> um, I don't know anyone who is upset about Mia Fischel deciding to go to Tigris. Trades in soccer happen all the time. Honestly, I was more sad about Maro and Losomer leaving O.L. Reign and going to Lyon. But I figured out how to watch Lyon games, so it's all good. On the topic of... European soccer, Arsenal officially signed Swedish forward Stina Blackstinius. I love that for Arsenal, great player and great signing. Arsenal then also went on to sign Austrian defender Laura Wienerreuter. Again, another good signing for Arsenal, well done. Lastly, Alexandra Pop has been medically cleared and hopefully will be able to start seeing her play for Wolfsburg and maybe even the German women's national team. That being said, let's get into the main news and what everyone is here for. The Portland Thorns ownership slash front office, Merritt Paulson, however way you look at it, decided to give the figurative middle finger to the Timbers Army, Rose City Riveters, and the nonprofit 107 Independent Supporters Trust, or the 107 IST or 107 IST. I'm not entirely sure what they're called, so I'm just going to call them the 107 IST for short, I guess. It's important to note that some of the Timbers Army and the Rosie Riveters are part of the 107 IST. Remember that because that's important for later. So who are the Timbers Army, Rosie Riveters, and the 107 IST? These are the biggest supporters of the Portland Thorns and the Portland Timbers. These are hardcore and passionate fans and supporters. They're at every game, they love their club, and they're very passionate when it comes to building and supporting not just the Thorns, Timbers, the players, but their community as well. So you're probably wondering if the Timbers Army, Rosie Riveters, and the 107 IST are the club's biggest supporters and fans, why is Merritt Paulson and the Thorns slash Timbers front office giving them the middle finger? Well. There are also rightfully the harshest critics of Merritt Paulson and the Thorns slash Timbers front office slash ownership. If Paulson or the front office screws up, the Timbers Army, Rose City Riveters, and the 107 IST will make their displeasure known, especially during games. We saw this last year when Mana Shim and Shanid Farelli came forward with their stories of sexual abuse surrounding former Thorns and Courage coach Paul Riley. During the games, the Timbers Army, Rose City Riveters, and the 107 IST were holding up signs that said, Believe All Players, Believe, Support, and Protect NWSL Players. And they also held up another sign that said, You Knew, which was directed to Merritt Paulson and Gavin Wilkinson, both of whom did nothing when Mana Shim and Shanid Farelli first reported Paul Riley's abuse back in 2015. Now, I think the pressure is really starting to get to Merritt Paulson and the front office. Anyway, in the article by Caitlin Murray for ESPN, link below, Mary, uh, Murray points out that the Timbers Army, Rose City Riveters, and the 107 IST were very close to the club and the front office. The 107 IST would meet each month with the Thorns front office executives. Since Mana Shim and Shanee Farelli came forward with their stories, 
there has not been any meetings between the supporters and the front office. According to Murray on, I mean, according to Murray, the front office has canceled meetings for October, November, December, and January. The Thorns front office would then go on to participate in the 2022 NWSL draft where they would draft controversial USF forward Sydney Nacello. Fans would discover later that she was transphobic and misogynistic. Fans brought this to the attention of the Thorns, but the Thorns remained silent, leading many people to believe that the Portland Thorns were serious about signing Nacello, a player that seemingly went against the values of Portland, the Thorns, and the Timbers. On the 7th of January, 2022, Meg Linehan, another soccer journalist, says through sources that Nacello would not be on the Thorns roster for 2022, and the club is looking for other options for Sydney Nacello. And now here we are today, (laughs) now that I've updated you guys. So, in a statement to ESPN on Thursday, January 13th, The club said it is ending meetings with supporters permanently. The statement says, We believe the 107 IST needs to be more inclusive and open to differing viewpoints from its small group of leadership. If our relationship is one-sided in a desire to drive protest over facts and players' desires, it isn't sustainable. The club statement continues, We've come to the conclusion that the previous framework for dialogue and communication is due for a refresh and we will no longer be holding 107 IST meetings in their current form as we look to increase our broader communication and input loops to the entirety of the supporters groups. So yeah, that is the statement by the Thorns front office that was given to journalist Caitlin Murray. Portland fans were made aware of this statement by reading Murray's article. If you are part of the Timbers Army, Rose City Riveters, in the 107 IST, that is how you found out your club wants nothing to do with you. And I am sorry if that came out harsh, but this statement is harsh. Not only harsh, but pathetic. How how pathetic is this statement? You can't even give an official statement to your club's biggest supporters. You have to do it through a journalist. It's like, hey guys, Merritt Paulson told me to tell you he doesn't want to talk to you. Let's look at the first part of the statement, though, because that part is actually important. It starts with, we believe the 107 IST needs to be more inclusive and open to differing viewpoints from its small group of leadership. Upon first reading this, I thought this had to do with Sydney Nacello. She clearly had different viewpoints that most Thorns and Timbers fans don't agree with. Her viewpoints are controversial to say the least, which was why I thought this statement had to do with her. But let's for a moment pretend Sydney Nacello doesn't exist. Let's say she doesn't exist, that whole debacle around her signing, or lack thereof, never happened. The meetings and discussions between the Thorns front office and supporters stopped after Mana Shim and Shanee Farrelly came forward with allegations of abuse against Paul Riley. Those talks stopped way before the NWSL draft, way before Nacello came on board. This was never about Sydney Nacello or her transphobic and misogynistic views. She may as well have been like the scapegoat or a distraction. Differing views, Nacello's views, had nothing to do with the Thorns slash Timbers ending communication with supporters. The reason why the Thorns front office is cutting off communication with supporters, I think it goes way back to the allegations against Paul Riley and the revelations that Merritt Paulson and Gavin Wilkinson knew this whole time that Paul Riley abused Monashim and Shanid Farrelly. Not only that, they knew and allowed him to be hired by the North Carolina Courage, who had no idea about Paul Riley's past history, possibly putting Courage players in a dangerous situation as well. The Timbers Army, Rose City Riveters, and the 107 IST would be and are still demanding answers. 
Communication, I personally believe, was cut off because Merritt Paulson doesn't want to own up to the fact that he and Gavin Wilkinson did nothing to help Manashim and Shanid Farrelly, instead staying friends and supporting the man who sexually abused them. This is really about Merritt Paulson and the front office not taking accountability for what they allowed to happen to Manashim and Shanid Farrelly. You can see the lack of accountability in the freaking statement. The Thorns front office is blaming their supporters. They're saying that it's the supporters' fault that they, the Thorns and Timbers, can't have these conversations and discussions because the supporters aren't being inclusive or open to different viewpoints. I'm sorry, what? Are we not all in agreement that sexually coercing and sexually abusing players is wrong? Anyway, there's supposed to be an, an independent investigation into the Thorns regarding Paul Riley and his time coaching at the Thorns. No one knows who's doing the investigation, and there hasn't been any results yet. Murray says in her article, The club declined comment to ESPN on the investigation, including who's conducting it, and it hasn't said much else pub publicly aside from Paulson's letter. But Paulson has promised on social media that the club will say more later. The investigation is still ongoing as of today and as of filming this video. And when it comes to the Portland Thorns slash Timbers, there is a deadline for season ticket renewals, which is January 21st. Portland fans slash supporters weren't happy about that because many were wanting to wait till the results of the investigation came out before deciding if they want to renew their season tickets. The 21st is coming up this Friday. It's still unknown whether the investigation will be completed by then. According to Murray's article, some supporters and fans believe the Thorns and Timbers are looking to replace them with more casual and easygoing fans slash supporters. I want to end this with the statement by the Timbers Army, Rose City Riveters, and the 107 IST. We are not surprised by Friday's statement from the Portland Timbers and Thorns front office. We believe that if asking for transparency and accountability through conversation is seen as contentious, that says far more about club leadership than it does about the 107 IST, the Timbers Army, or the Rose City Riveters. We will continue to do what we do. We will support these players. We will remain as we have always been, independent. So, at the end of the day, fans and supporters are demanding and asking for transparency and accountability. To the Timbers and Thorns front office, even though you're probably not going to watch this video, stop blaming your supporters and fans and take accountability for what you did or didn't do for your players. You canceled the meetings and have ended communication with your supporters. That's on you to fix, not the supporters, not the fans. It was never the supporters' fault, and you know that. If you want to go with the differing ideas and needing to be inclusive argument, these are what your fans and supporters stand against. And at one time, you did too. Anyway, for closing remarks, I kind of <laughs> had a headache after piecing all this together. This is kind of this is kind of what I think is the reason why the Thorns slash Timbers are cutting off communication with their supporters. It's very odd to me that this is happening. I feel like there is more to this that meets the eye, but I don't know. I guess we'll have to see moving forward into the 2022 season. Anyway, that is all I have for you guys today or tonight, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later.